We're here in the Whitehorse Wildland Park in the Rocky Mountains to look for an endangered species. It's an endangered species that is found in only a few locations in Alberta, and Alberta has some of the best populations in all of North America. That species is a moss called the Porcelain's Brium. I've been studying moss for well over 35 years. The long and the short of it is that in the overall scheme of things, mosses are just like any other plant. In some systems, some ecosystems, they are extremely important. If you're in a regular kind of forest, most of the ground cover will be moss in many, many instances. In fact, if you look around in this forest and some parts of it, it's just nothing but moss. In those instances, mosses do sort of the same kinds of things. They, they will absorb water and hold water and release it very, very slowly. In Canada, we have uh, something like uh, 1,165 different kinds of moss, different species of moss. In Alberta, there's more than 550 different kinds. So the question is, well, what do these guys do? Let's start at the basics. Let's start with what mosses are. They're a living organism. And as a living organism, they have relationships with other living organisms where they happen to live. In many places, um, mosses provide food for different kinds of bugs. They provide homes for very small mammals. They also absorb nutrients, and when they die, they add nutrients to the soil. So they have lots of different functions. When we talk about Porcel's Brian, it's one of those species that, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of information about it. What we're trying to find out is what its limitations are in terms of what it requires. So how much water does it require? What kind of nutrients does it require? We also are trying to find out whether or not the numbers and the amount of this moss is changing over time. As, as most of us know, the, the world is in, and I hate to use this cliche, the world is in constant change, the climate is changing, uh, conditions around us in the mountains are always ever changing. Uh, so we're trying to discover first what that moss requires so that we can use that information to predict where it's going to be found because uh, there's still a lot of places that we haven't actually looked for it. And secondly, the monitoring part is keeping track of it over time. So we're setting up permanent plots where we know the moss is found and we're going there and we're collecting water samples and soil samples to find out what kinds of nutrients it needs. We're counting the actual number of colonies and we're keeping track of these colonies so that in five years time we can go back to the same sites and see if that moss has increased or decreased in numbers.